Hello and welcome to another episode of Cut Content. And this week with the release of the Ratchet and Clank game and movie, I thought what would be a better time than now to go back to the original games on the PS2 and take a look at what content was removed from them. I myself am super excited to check out these goodies and see what was ripped from the code of the game. So let's hop right into some of this amazing content. Starting off with the original Ratchet and Clank, we have some unused cutscenes that would have appeared before the hoverboard races that included these. Okay, hoverboy, how about going for the course record? Just part of my job, don't get any ideas. And by the way, you've won a ton of bolts. Okay guys, there's still one time left to beat. Do you want to try for the galactic record? What can I say? Skin McMarks is old news. You guys are the fastest boarders in the galaxy. There was also going to be a gold version of every gun in the game, but these concepts were scrapped since there was really no point of them besides the color change, and it didn't really benefit the game at all. There was also supposed to be a different version of the wrench called the Mackerel 1000, which was literally just a fish and was intended to be a joke in the game, but after a quick period of time, the developers realized it wasn't that funny and scrapped the idea completely, even though I think it would have been a nice little easter egg or cheat code to leave in the game. There are a few clips of audio never heard in the game, both from the help desk lady. The first mentioning the goodies tab, which is never mentioned by anyone in the final version of the game. Congratulations. Now that Chairman Drex account has been closed, you're Gadgetron's most valued customer. We've got new items available for you. Just check the new goodies menu on your pause screen. And the last is mentioning nanotech and what it does. You just picked up nanotech. Whenever you sustain injury, let Gadgetron's patented nanotech system rebuild your body from the inside out. Though this message is pretty close to what it says in-game, the final version says that's nanotech instead of you just picked up nanotech. We also have two unused enemies scrapped from the first game. The first being a Blarg Gas Mask Commander, which were intended to be the last Blarg on Orkson, and from the picture I could assume shot some sort of poison gas at the player. The last enemy was the Hydra, which is supposedly fightable in some versions of the beta game, but I can't seem to find any video footage of this to confirm it. It was supposed to be a boss you would fight in Pokateru, but was eventually scrapped and replaced with the puffer fish that jump onto the boat. For a closer look at the enemy though, you can see it in the Insomniac Museum of Going Commando. Oh, and I guess I shouldn't forget to mention this little chicken icon, which was used as a placeholder if any graphics couldn't be displayed in the HUD. And that's about it for Ratchet and Clank 1, so let's head into Going Commando, shall we? Let's start off with some gadgets and weapons that include what appears to be flame boots that would leave a trail of fire behind Ratchet while Circle is pressed, and would light enemies that touched it on fire. Plus, if you made a circle with the fire, it would create a massive explosion damaging all enemies around. There was also a mine glove type weapon that dropped mines and when multiple were used would link up with a laser. If an enemy were to walk through the laser, the closest bomb would be set off, damaging the enemy that triggered it. Clank also had an upgrade for his jetpack that allowed you to shoot underwater called the gun sled, which would help you kill enemies and shoot down barriers. But the developers couldn't find enough uses for the item and decided it would be better left out. An interesting weapon that wasn't used was called the Hounds of Doom. Not much is known about the weapon besides that it would look like a small robotic dog and would attach onto enemies dealing damage over time, and would only let go if shook off or if the enemy died. The last weapon is actually one you can see in the first game being held by a miner, which was called the Revolverator, which Ratchet could hit enemies with and then spin them over his head. And I for one can take a guess that this was cut because spinning people over your head on a drill sounds pretty hardcore for a Ratchet game. But the developers also stated that it would leave Ratchet open for attacks and require additional development resources the team didn't have at the time, so it was eventually cut from the game. The weapons facility on Todana was going to have its own music track, but due to an error in the game, it's never heard in any PAL versions of the game.
There are also a few unused cutscenes, including this one with a thug leader on Megapolis. Greetings, morons. Since my employees did such a lousy job of taking care of you, I thought I'd come and handle things myself. You must be the head of Thugs Foles. No, you must be the... Oh, wait. Yeah, I run Thugs Foles, and you two have gotten on the wrong side of my tracks. Your tracks? Never mind. I'll just show you what I mean. And after obtaining the second ranch on Aranus. Hey, check this out. Another ranch. But what if it is worse than the old one? Uh, I don't think it works that way. And on Demoselp, right before a giant clank transformation. You see that moon? Let's go exploring. Moving into up your arsenal, let's start with something in the game that almost no one has probably heard. If you go to the first boss room of the first Quark vid comic and stand below the entrance, you will hear this song. This was to be used as the boss music for the first vid comic, but was replaced in the final version of the game. And speaking of vid comics, two cut comics were going to be included in the game. The first called Unnamed Quark Vid Comic, which looked much like Shadow of the Robot, but had a cyber eye as the boss of the level. The other vid comic was called Booty is in the Eye of the Beholder. It had an interesting level design with multiple paths you could take, made you fight with your bare fists, and in the end fought Captain Blackstar as a boss. And even though I think the vid comics are awesome and I miss them in the new games, it's time to move on. So let's talk about some enemies not used in the final version of the game. First off, we have this turtle looking thing that would have been found on Dax. They would have attacked you by jumping in the air and biting you, but were eventually replaced by the blood flies. Also to appear on Dax was the Dax Beast that would have thrown the turtle enemies at you or exploding crates, but due to too many bugs, they decided to leave this one out and save themselves the hassle. The last enemy that was supposed to appear on Daz was the Swarmers, which were just a swarm of enemies that would roll up in a ball and attack Ratchet. And even though they were cut from this game, they eventually made it into Tools of Destruction. But sadly for Up Your Arsenal, they were replaced with the Mutant Fireflies. There are also some leftover weapons from older games, including a working bomb glove, a sheepinator that doesn't shoot, and a giant plasma whip, but without the whip part. A few gadgets also exist, like the Tetra Damage that would up the damage you did when breaking the box, and an upgrade crate that would instantly level up your lowest level weapon when broken. Last but not least, we have a few deadlock things to talk about. First is some never heard voiceovers. The first is alternate dialogue for one of the three Shellshock missions. Ladies and gentlemen, today's All-Star Exterminator is the one, the only, Shellshock! Give it up for the Killer Colossus! Oh, looks like our contestant may be headed for an early retirement. It's a safe bet, Dallas. Shellshock was discharged from the military for incinerating his commanding officer on 26 separate occasions. They say he has problems with anger and impulse control. But uh, frankly, Dallas, I don't see it. We got this sucker on the ropes. Let's finish him off. Shellshock again? Be careful, he looks angry. Oh man, deja vu. Didn't we already scrap this guy? We also have possible dialogue for the Sathros mission. Team Dogstar's got their work cut out for them today. Think they can reach the first arena unscathed? Of course you don't. Dreadzone's last yes will be right there to welcome them. Welcome, Team Dogstar! Welcome to Set and Doom! Oh, I should have been an actor. She's got a mean streak, ladies and gentlemen. Ratchet, my tech bot friend is streaming me data on your current mission. She told me I was cute today. <laughs> and pieces of dialogue related to Ace Hardlight. Ratchet, my tech droid friend has given me some valuable information. Inside the statue of Ace Hardlight, there is a secret escape vessel. Oh, I see. It's all becoming clear to me now. Sort of. Ratchet plans to use the Furium Detonator to destroy the Ace Hardlight Memorial? I had to interview that arrogant prat once. If it was me, I'd do the same thing. 
Another for a possible final boss fight chatter. Vox has several layers of security. Hacking through it has been tough, but I did manage to unlock his communication network. He chats around the galaxy with other Slugger lovers. His screen name is Voxy Loves Slugger. That's it, Lombax! Drive my ratings through the roof! After I kill you, I'll be selling Gleam and Vox action figures. <laughs> Gleam and Vox, champion exterminator! Ow! Nothing we can't tape over in post. Ow! Stop the cameras! Just when you hoped his career was finally over, get ready for an encore performance from Ace Hardlight! And the most interesting, some dialogue that informs us there was going to be a mission where you would have to save Hydro Girl. Which is even more interesting seeing as besides this, the only time she talks in game is during the ending cutscene. Tonight, on a very special episode of Dread Zone, intergalactic heroes Ratchet and Clank are reunited once again. But will this famous duo have what it takes to survive the dangers that await them in the deadly Meteor Temple of Shar? But wait, guess who's imprisoned and being left for dead? Hydro Girl! Hey, Hydro Girl, HG, can you hear me? Of course you can't. Wondering who stole your Hydro Girl X-ray sunshades? Me, baby! Hack those security orbs and get me out of here! Hey, Jim Darkstar, over here! Ah! Ratchet! Help! Can anyone hear me? Get me out of here! Thanks, cutie. I owe you one. I thought you'd be taller. Thanks, Ratchet. I knew you'd come through. We also have this very interesting costume for Ratchet that has you dressed up like Clank, and a gun called the Raptor that was the V3 upgrade of the Dual Vipers, but was never used in the final version of the game, but seen in the Bang 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 Danger of the Galaxy Legend comic and see what content was deleted from those as well. But until then, I'll have to see you in the next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. I love you all. Have a good night. I just have to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, because without all of you, my content would not be where it is right now. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, check the link above for more information. But a huge shout out to Robo Liberty, Brad Moore, Andre Droulard, Thomas Bethel, Robert Velasco, Dominic Sharma, and the YouTuber Legend Gary. Also check out Legend Gary's new video on Spyro the Dragon, it is fantastic.